I have the pleasure of speaking with Atul Sabharwal from SNP Interactive. How are you today? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? Um, Atul, I was going to start by talking about your most recent news release, but last night I was speaking to one of your shareholders and he was talking about your 16 consecutive quarters of increasing revenue and he was talking to me about how you know you have experience in Silicon Valley and how you took your own money and invested in starting SNP Interactive and that you are have a lot of skin in the game. Could you start by telling us uh, you know, how you started SNP Interactive, please? You know, back in 2012, uh, Ritesh and I, my co-founder and me, we had an uh, idea about how to make advertising more measurable. And, um, you know, the cons basically what you're seeing is the fruit of that, of the labors that we've put in to, you know, answering that question and making, putting together a system that basically helps us, um, you know, help brands make the advertising more measurable. Okay, well, that sounds extremely interesting to me, especially uh, in an. It's my understanding the U.S. brand marketing uh, sector alone is an eighty billion dollar market. Can you tell us, you know, what aspect of this market that you are going to be targeting with SNP or that you are focused on? Right. So, so the, the beautiful part about this eighty billion dollar market is it, it, it's what you call the promotion marketing spend, which includes everything from, you know, contests, instant wins, sweepstakes, full blown loyalty programs, right? And there are multiple vendors, so it's a highly fragmented market, right? And we are in the process of surely but steadily disrupting this $80 billion market. And it's not one segment of the market, it's basically the entire market. Because brands have to run promotions across the year. So, you know, a promotion is something that's run at a, in a promotion window. And what is a promotion window? We just finished, you know, um, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, you know, Christmas, New Year's. Um, now is Valentine's Day is coming up, then comes the, the Super Bowl, then comes, you know, back to school, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, there are 80 promotion windows in a year that brands have to run promotions on, right? And they run different sorts of promotions that make up this $80 billion market. And we basically play across that spectrum. But that's not the exciting part, right? $80 billion is a good number, but it's not a great number. A better number is the amount of money that people spend in advertising, which is over $500 billion annually. And by us disrupting the $80 billion market, we actually allowing ourselves to disrupt the five hundred billion dollar advertising spend market because our data makes advertising more measurable. Well, I understand that in addition to making your uh, uh, quantifying basically the advertising, which previously most company or companies just simply could not do, that you've also got a model where you don't disturb the middleman. Um, in that you're focused on the end user. Can you explain that just a little bit more to me? Sure. So, so, you know, there's a chain of command in this industry like I was talking about before, right? So a brand sells to a retailer, a retailer sells to you and me. Now, if a, if a brand, you know, pisses off, for the lack of a better word, their retailer, what's going to happen? The retailer's not going to stock their product in store. They're going to give them less shelf space. They're not going to give them online presence on their websites. It doesn't matter whether it's a traditional brick-and-mortar retailer or a online retailer or both as in the case of most retailers today who sell online and offline, right? It doesn't matter whether it's Amazon or Walmart stores, right? Or Walmart.com, right? Um, you know, there's a chain of command in the industry and the brands have to respect that chain of command because if they don't, their sales will decline. And, you know, a simple example is Coke gets six inches more of shelf space and the banner ad on Walmart's beverage page, sales will decline for Pepsi, right? So, so you have to respect what the retailer wants. And in that process and in that chain of command, you know, typically, you know, historically, there have been very few solutions that actually optimize it based on the retailer. The simple, the simple paradigm here to understand is a brand doesn't care where you buy their product as long as you buy their product, and a retailer doesn't care what you buy as long as you walk into their store and buy it, right? So what our platform does is basically optimizes that equation, which is we can customize programs for the brand, retailer, and consumer equation so that we drive people back into the same store that, you know, they bought at before, so the retailer does not have an issue with the brand running promotions to capture data about you and me. Okay, so with no debt, money in the bank, what should we as shareholders expect this year, including a p potential shareholder loyalty program? Yeah, so I mean, you know, we, 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 we continue to run the business. I mean, our, our whole goal, I'm, I'm the single largest shareholder of the company and my co-founder is, is, is of the same size. So together we still own a significant portion of our company. You know, for us, the whole point is continue to drive um, drive value for shareholders, continue to disrupt the industry that we've started disrupting, um, continue to collect our data set and increase and enhance that data set so that we can launch new solutions for brand managers, um, 
towards the objectives that we've set for ourselves. So, you know, for this year, I mean, I think history is a great indicator of, of the past. And, you know, we've had four years um, of continuous growth since we launched on the Toronto Stock Exchange and now we are on the OTC QX market. Um, you know, our whole goal is to get on the NASDAQ at some point when we get to a big enough size. Um, and we continue to do what we've done. You know, I, I don't think I have a, a goal other than continue to make money for the company and our shareholders. Well, I can certainly see why uh, you have so many shareholders that love SNP. Thank you, Atul, for joining us today. Thanks for having me.